welcome back. I'm Shannon. This is my husband. Steven. <laughs> and I thought it would be fun to introduce you to my husband, my better half, so to speak. We actually just celebrated our 16th dating anniversary. Do any of y'all celebrate your dating anniversaries or are we the only weirdos? And I mean by celebrate, we're just like happy dating anniversary. <laughs> In celebration of our dating anniversary, we would share with you our love story. So, let's talk first impressions. What was your first impression? My first impression of Shannon was uh, actually from the backside. I, I was actually walking into Red Lobster and Shannon was basically bent over cleaning the booths. And so, uh, my first impression was from the backside. and. Uh, I definitely liked what I saw. That's my first impression. Oh my goodness. Well, it's starting off the bay. I thought it was the circle of trust. So no. I it was. <laughs> we both worked at Red Lobster and waited tables. I started in July while Steven was on a summer internship. We both went to Texas A&M. So with the Red Lobster there, shout out to our Red Lobster Peeps. friends. Peeps. Yeah. What was your first impression, Shannon? So, <laughs> my first impression was not quite as um, nice. So I'm in there working, hustling, in walks this guy with his coasters and he's just shuffling them, walking in like he owns the place. Granted, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know that he had been working there. He was coming back from the summer internship. My first impression was, who does this new guy think he is? And she quickly learned. <laughs> yeah, I guess he had good reason because a lot of the ladies did like him there. It is what it is. So I guess it took a couple of months of flirting, wouldn't you say? Because it was like October-ish when we started, I guess, getting the feels for each other. Probably a couple months. Yeah. Something around there. Then someone was having a house party and asked me if I'd come and I took it as an opportunity to say, well, I'll be there if she comes. Goes. And I got invited. Yeah. <laughs> Cause out. Steven at the time was the life of the party and still is, you still are. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so we went to this house party. My little brother happened to be in town uh, for this event. Little this big brother. Yeah. So it, this was not a date. This was kind of like, seeing each other outside of work kind of thing. Cause we kind of ran in different circles at Red Lobster. This was kind of like me going to hang out with his friends, I guess you would say. The cool crowd? The, co the cool crowd. <laughs> we go to this house party. My little brother, who's three years younger than me, I was 19 at the time, so that would make him 16. Yeah, I can do that. So we're sitting on the couch Steven and I are visiting and my little brother's there on the other side of me. Kevin leans over and That's her brother. Oh yeah, sorry. Kevin's my brother. And he leans over and he goes, as the loudest whisper anyone on the planet could ever whisper, goes, It's he the one. And I was like, come in, shh. I played it cool. I wasn't sure if he heard or not, but I played it cool. Definitely heard. You know, we're still at the play it cool stage at this point. <laughs> and um, yeah, he heard, so. And it, it worked out perfect, you know, in a way we say Kevin was played a little bit of the matchmaking role because uh, a little bit timid trying to make sure I had it locked down before I made a move. Um, so that was definitely the green light. <laughs> so I actually drove her home to find Kevin already asleep on the couch. I dropped we you. We walked. Mm-mm. Uh-huh. No, I had the F-150. I dropped you off. And his apartment was like extremely close to yours. Mm-hmm. I thought you, we walked. See, Kevin and I walked back. Maybe. Yeah. I guess we don't really know how the story it's, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been pretty fuzzy. But the good news is he did end up asking me out on our first date. So do you want to tell him about our first date or do you want me to? Sure. Um, <laughs> first date, 
just the ordinary call, see if she has plans, invite her to uh, dinner in the movie sort of thing. There's more backstory to that, but on my end, I, I was free, so I invited her to... Um, I had a few suitors on the line at the time. Yeah, so anyway, um, we went to um, what's called Texas Roadhouse and the uh, movie was The Incredibles. It went really well. Clearly. Seemed like a really sweet girl. After that first date, I knew that he was the one. I don't know if it was a combination of like the music you played in the truck that was like, here's a guy that likes country and Dave Matthews. Uh, and I don't know, there was something silly about that. I'm sure it was probably all Dave Matthews yeah, at the probably time. probably was. But. but just, you know, up until that point, I had either dated guys who like alternative music or I liked the country boys. It was like never a good mix. So Steven appeared to be a good mix. It was also a guy that takes you to a cartoon on our first date. There was just something endearing about that. So I had been playing it real cool up to this point. After that first date, I let him know how I felt and I let him know, I didn't, I mean, I wasn't like crazy, but I just showed all my cards. After the first date, I was like, I've got to see him again. So I called and I asked him out or I asked him what he was doing or, wanted to see if he wanted to hang out and he basically told me no I can't and I thought I thought I was being shot down I thought oh man this guy doesn't like me like I thought he did <laughs> and he was he didn't want to let on that all of our phone conversations he'd been taking outside for privacy reasons because he had a roommate and Come on. yeah and so he was taking his the phone our phone calls outside and Remember, this is like November, December. So he had got walking pneumonia. And so he wasn't doing the cold shoulder. It was, he was like general, genuinely sick and couldn't talk and all that. So anyway, that was kind of funny. But thankfully it didn't. Hilarious. <laughs> but thankfully it didn't ruin, you know, what was blossoming. We're still here. <laughs> Huh. Yeah. So Steven and I disagree on this, on what our first I love you was. What did you say our first I love you was? I didn't, I didn't know that we uh, disagreed on it. Yes, we Because it only happened once and uh, I'm right, but whatever. Um, so basically it was in the apartment she shared with uh, Amanda and uh, it was like right after her first uh, brutal fight that's like funny, my story's other. after two, yeah, but no, different like, locations. Like any other relationship point, we, we had a huge, huge argument or disagreement, you know, not really a fight, but just disagreement. It, it was kind of funny, it was, it was a little weird, it was, there was a lot of crying involved and uh, actually she ended up saying, I love you, and I repeated it. And I told her I loved her too, and so it was a, a really weird end to a fight. That was kind of a theme when we were dating, though. Breakups, fights, love each other, tears shed, back together. I like to thing. say that we're very passionate, stubborn people. Definitely. So we butt heads a lot. But Emotion emotionally driven. Yeah. We're, Both. And we, we, we still kind of do that, but not as much, right? Yeah, I mean, we, we pick up on signals a lot better now, and obviously, like, I've uh, kind of learned something over the years, which, uh, pick your battles. Not the um, woman's always right? Well, I mean, we don't lie, so that's also very important in our relationship, so I wouldn't say something silly like that, but, <laughs> but uh, de definitely right. pick your battles, right? So, and of course, she's always right. Yeah. There you go. What was your first I love you? So my first I love you was pretty much the same story. <laughs> Just a different location, right? Just a different location. It was like a month after we were dating and we were at my parents' house. I don't even know what we had gotten into a disagreement about, but. Because we weren't there. 
I just remember it being outside my parents' house and us making up and saying, I love you. So that kind of leads me into it. So we mentioned we would break up and get back together, break up, and nothing ever lasted more than 24 hours, I would say. We would make up pretty quick. So after about a year of dating, Steven graduated, much to his parents' delight, and he moved to Houston, which was about an hour and a half away from College Station. So I was still there, I still had a couple more years. So during that time while we were doing long distance, we broke up big time. I was going through some very hard times with my family. There was a lot going on with my family. And I was going through some uh, extreme struggles with alcoholism and that was something that uh, was at its peak at that, at that time for me in my life too. So it made it extremely difficult. We both had a lot of just uh, physical and uh, mental issues that we were personally dealing with. Yeah. So we decided to part ways on that. I think we had broken up for a, a solid two weeks. I was sure that was it, I thought. Yeah, this is not, we're not getting back together. I was, I was, yeah, we were, we were done at that point. Mm -hmm. But the story was not over yet. Plot thickens. So what happened next? So she was going through a lot of personal issues, you know, back home. I knew she loved and always wanted um, miniature Dotson. I mean, I even thought Dapple, right? Or was that yeah. something I came up with on I my own? Know. I'm not yeah. sure, but on that part. But I was at the uh, mall. I'm sure the only reason I went there was gifts. So I was looking for somebody, something. I don't even remember. Maybe it was there for that reason. I don't know. Uh, but I stopped by the puppy store, which I always did when I was at the mall. I uh, saw Rusty. Uh, he was there with a little sister. Um, and I think maybe another brother. I don't remember, but... There was, there was like three, two or three little Dotsons there, a uh, little Dapple. Um, Rusty was just so hyper. He was the one I knew she needed that because um, what she was going through back home and all her personal, I mean, she was, she was on the brink of just leaving school and uh, being done, period, with, with Texas A&M and uh, going in a new direction and you know, I, I I had some guilt from the breakup, but I also, you know, because there were, you know, alcohol and other stuff on my side that, that wasn't making it any easier. I wanted to give her um, this dog as, as a way to comfort her, to give her a companion. Rusty was amazing. He served his purpose on, in this world was for her and it was for her. Um, happiness and enjoyment. He he definitely uh, lived a good life. And what I didn't do was get her the dog so we could get back together. However, uh, she definitely took the jester quite well. Yeah. So your side of that. Rusty, even to this day, was the best dog. Rusty just passed away about a year ago or two years ago. There's his little paw prints up there. There's his little paw prints up there. He was a really special dog and he was my dog. He was my little shadow, but yeah. Definitely won my heart back for sure. And thankfully everything worked out with my family. I graduated A&M and it was a happy ending. So we continued to date for two years which means I was approaching graduation. Engagement talk started probably, what, a year before that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like when, when I... All my friends were getting engaged. They were, all my friends that were in the same classes Maybe even were, before that breakup. Well, yeah, we, we, always, we always knew that yeah. we were the one. But all my friends were getting engaged and I was just sitting there like, when am I gonna get my ring? You know, I had a set rule from my mom. She was not able to finish her college education when she got pregnant with my brother Josh. And you know, she always told me to make sure Shannon graduates. And so for me, you know, I didn't wanna propose until we were ready to get married. I wanted to make sure that she graduated before I even proposed. And 
she hated that it was not um patience is not a spiritual gift of mine <laughs> <laughs> you can leave the spirits out of this. But um, after after graduation, the actual day, I um, had been planning this. My parents knew, and they attended her graduation. They were going to go anyway, so it wasn't anything yeah. out of the ordinary. But we were with Mom and Dad because they wanted to capture it um, all on video. And I don't think that ended up working out for us. But No, they did catch it on video. I just... I'll have to see if I can find it. We just lost the, in the video. deep depths of my digital files. Of our life. <laughs> Somewhere. My parents were with us. I was like, I want to take them over to Bolton Hall, check it out, and look. And what's outside Bolton Hall, Hall is uh, the Century Tree. If any of y'all know anything about A&M, it's a very traditional uh, place to propose. And so I wanted to do that. And that's where it went down. Much to her surprise, she definitely wasn't expecting it right then and there. So after graduation, I was on to him about this because everybody was going to eat and he wanted to go on some obscure path to take pictures where I graduated versus where the century tree was located was quite out of the way and something we certainly could have done another time and i was making it about me yeah and he was her, making it about him it was her graduation he wanted to go take pictures so i was on to him so of course i just let it slide you know and watched it play out as it happened man yeah and that face let me tell you that was a, i was on to him moment <laughs> i'm a good actress yeah <laughs> Anyway, so he proposed. Hopefully I can find pictures to insert. Even better if I can find the video, if it even exists anymore. So we had like the uh, graduation, engagement dinner sort of thing. Because all I remember from that was her dad leaning over to me and saying uh, that she was my problem now. So You mean I'm your blessing now? Exactly what he said. <laughs> right, Pete? <laughs> I am a handful, but... I'm worth it. That's pretty much our love story. Of course, we go off, get married, have a few kids. Here we are 16 years later. Living the dream. Living the dream. And I would do it all over again. Wouldn't you? Should've, oh, it should've. You paused. Here we are 16 years later. Best decision we ever made. Good answer. So I would like to know. Where'd you go on your last first date? Or, if you're not married yet, where was your favorite first date? Don't want to leave anyone out. Anyway, thanks for joining us today. I hope you were as entertained as I was during this video. Go say something kind to yourself. And we will see you next time. And love your spouse. Love your spouse. Bye.